Welcome back. Look at that beautiful picture of Epcot Center behind me. It's my favorite background in eight years. <laughs> you can actually, this is part of the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. You can get this for your phone uh, on their app. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, there's a reason I'm looking real happy right now. Our next guest and I have a shared love of Disney, and she writes about travel for publications like The Points Guy and more, uh, helping families navigate Disney. I always say that Disney influencers drive me crazy, but uh, Michael does Disney, and Brooke are the only two that I love. She is the best. Give it up for Disney blogger, Brooke McDonald. Hi, Brooke. Hello. Thank you. So it's excited so to be here. I, okay, uh, we, I'm really excited to have you. And it was funny, Brooke, I, I gotta tell folks, Brooke has done podcasts, Brooke is a journalist, she, her name is on bylines everywhere. But I approached Brooke to do this and you were like, um, I don't know, I've only done podcasts. So, I'm thrilled that you are doing this. Thank you. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I very rarely talk on camera, but here we are. Here I'm we excited are. Excited to talk with you. <laughs> uh, I want to start. Uh, I want to kind of start at the beginning. Uh, as I said in the intro, you and I have a shared love of Disney. When and we have a picture of you as a kid. When did your love? We're getting it. We're getting it. Okay. Uh, when did your love of Disney start, Brooke? And how? Oh gosh, I mean, childhood for sure. We started going as a family um, as you know, my, as early as I can remember. Um, I think my first trip, I was probably three, and we went, you know, more or less every year throughout my childhood. And um, even when I, even you know, after college and in my adult life, I was living in London for a while, and then I would get to Disneyland Paris and. When I moved home and had my first son, um, his first Walt Disney World trip was at eight months old. And we, and then my second son's first trip was at four months old. <laughs> and we've just been, we, uh, we joined Disney Vacation Club. Um, so in, in order to make it less expensive to go really regularly and stay in, you know, the deluxe resorts, which is a wonderful component of DVC. And, you know, then we got annual passes and it kind of just spiraled and um, I continued to scale up. I've always been a writer, editor, journalist, but I was able to really scale up my Disney coverage and really blend, you know, what I love to do in my personal life with what I do for work. Brooke, I always try to explain to folks because here in the Twin Cities and we're in Seattle and all and different places, I always try to describe because people in, in the state knows that I love Disney World and I love Disney. For and I always try to explain to people why as an adult, oh, it's just for kids. Um, and there's a picture of me, I think, as a kid at Disney World, but there I am with Pinocchio. But oh, look at my shorts that I have pulled up to my neck. But anyway, <laughs> um, Brooke, what do you say to people? What is it? How do you and I explain it to people? I mean, it is magic. What is it about Disney World that brings your family back there? Gosh, you know, it when I first had kids, um, it felt like a lot of vacationing and just generally parenting is a lot of work. And yeah. when you want to go on a vacation, you know, a beach vacation as a parent isn't really relaxing, <laughs> you know, trying to, <laughs> you're worried about your kids, you know, running in the water and you're building sand castles and you're putting on, you know, sunscreen and dealing with sand a hundred times and things like that. For some reason, when we would go to the Disney parks, it was like your entertainment is just there. Everyone's happy. You kind, we kind of as parents would just sort of stand behind our kids and follow along and follow their energy and excitement. And so um, the way that it actually became sort of an easy, I know people think it's so hard to go to Walt Disney World. It's so hard to go to Disneyland, the planning, it's exhausting. But once you get it down to a science, we actually feel like it's the easiest, yes. most enjoyable vacation we could possibly do. I agree with you. And we're going to talk specifically in the next segment. Um, Brooke just got back from the much talked about Star Wars Hotel, the Galactic Star Cruiser. But I do want to ask you a broad question because as I said in the intro, I adore you. Um, I, Brooke is really probably the only person that's there more than I am and, and, and Colin, but um, I'm going to put you on the spot. Give everyone okay. watching, because one of the good things about Brooke is she, she is looking at this through the lens of, of a parent and as a journalist. What is one of your best general tips for people watching right now that are in the midst of planning a summer or fall trip to Disney World? Well, you know what, you really just have to, you really just have to look at what your priorities are. Yep. Um, and think about what you're willing to spend and how much, 
you know, your time is money on your vacation. Um, if it's a once a year trip or a once every five years trip or a once in a lifetime trip, um, I re you really need to think about budgeting for Disney Genie Plus and budgeting for the individual lightning lanes. And that is an extra cost that can be, you know, Disney Genie, it really depends on when you're going. Disney Genie Plus could be for a family of four an additional $120 a day. So it's certainly not insignificant, um, but if you are going right now when crowds are high, um, it's, it's all about maximizing that experience. You know, is your priority your resort and the pool um, and where you're staying? Or, you know, you have to think about the proximity to the right parks that you're going to spend the most time at. Um, it's, it's really asking yourself, what are my top priorities? If it's rides, you're going to want to budget, I think, for things like Disney Genie Plus and more individual lightning lanes and really strategize, you know, early entry and rope drop and staying late and trying to hit those low times. I, I love, and we're gonna take a break in a second. I love that you said, cause I say, Colin and I, when we go, we go, time is money at Disney. It is everywhere, but you're spending a lot of money already and you wanna maximize every, right Brooke? You wanna maximize every minute you're there. Absolutely. I mean, there are ways, you know, to, to do other things and not spend as much money. And as a family that goes all the time, we do that a lot. Um, we do a lot fewer rides lately um, because we don't we couldn't go as much as we do if we bought yes. Disney Genie Plus every single day, for example. So we, we have found alternatives. But if you are that once a year, once every five years family, you're going to want to consider that more strongly. As I said a few minutes ago, Brooke and her family just got back from a incredible trip aboard the Galactic Star Cruiser. What is it like? Is it for your family? What's the pricing like? Everything Brooke has it when we come back. In the meantime, follow Brooke right there. Her address is at the bottom, Brooke G. McDonald. We'll be back more with Brooke after this. Welcome back. Thank you for being here. Well, I'm joined today by Disney travel blogger, journalist Brooke McDonald. Again, follow Brooke there. Uh, somebody said this about you, Brooke. Nobody knows more about everything that's going on in the parks than Brooke, and it's, and it's the darn truth. Okay, Brooke, you just got back, because I do follow you. you. Oh, actually, Brooke, we got that video. I want to see this. I want everyone to see. Uh, this is how long Brooks. <laughs> ha, Brooke, look at you. Oh, my goodness. Look at these pictures. Oh, Those rainbow Ep costumes at Epcot, the classic. Oh, I was just going to say, look at Minnie's costume. Mm -hmm. Brooke, how old were you there? Like six or seven? No, I think younger than that. I think like about five. Oh, my gosh. So cute. Well, as I said, Brooke just got back, uh, literally just got back from the Galactic Star Cruiser. Let me ask you a general question first. The Star Wars Hotel, as people call it. What, what is it, Brooke, for people that aren't like you and I that are versed in the vernacular? What really is this? Well, first of all, what it's not is a hotel. Um, <laughs> yes. It is a place that it is a place where you you do sleep there, but it is a two day, two night, completely immersive experience. Um, it's essentially a space cruise um, that you know you don't. It, it's a virtual space cruise. You board a ship, you take a launch pod up into space, you step into the most beautiful atrium. All of the windows on the ship are out into space. Um, you'll make the jump. You'll make jumps to hyperspace. Um, there's sounds and kind of the feeling that you're on a ship the whole time. Even in your um, in your cabin, you have a porthole out into space. Um, that's your window. So um, everything about the space is um, it's not a traditional hotel. There's not a pool. There's not a fitness center. Things like that. Um, and it is completely immersive. There are uh, characters throughout and you basically step onto the ship and step into a story. Um, and I would, and all, I mean, the other big thing I would say is this is an absolute VIP type of experience, um, the way that you're treated. If you think that Disney cast members are, you know, go above and beyond at all, all over property, this is an absolute next level. There's someone, helping you or asking you what you need all the time. And then there's, you know, you turn and there might be a Star Wars, a stormtrooper standing next to you, ready to interrogate you or a droid rolling up. And 
Um, it is just for Star Wars fans, particularly, it is like nothing I have ever experienced. It's our favorite vacation we've ever done and in our lives, for and, sure. <laughs> and that's saying a lot because Brooke has, has done it all, especially in the Disney universe. Brooke, as you know, it's, it's, it's a controversial topic, the Galactic Star Cruiser, mainly because of its affordability. That has come down. Disney has listened, haven't they? And the prices are coming down a little bit. Am I right on that? Um, not, not exactly. Okay. So the base prices um, have more or less stayed the same. They have offered a discount so far to Disney Vacation Club members, um, which depending on how they're, depending on how you work it um, with the way that you would use your points and the discounts, it can, that can actually translate to a pretty nice discount. Um, and then they have offered a discount option for the nights before and or after um, you would stay at a Walt Disney World Resort if you were to, and I really recommend bookending this experience with a stay. Um, you don't want to arrive the morning of, and it's yeah. it's such a frenetic, immersive experience that you really want to sleep there, sleep on property the night before, and be you know ready to go. Um, so that is a discount that can be up to seven hundred dollars if you were to stay for two nights, depending on which um, resort. But the cost of the Star Cruiser experience itself is still more or less the same right now yeah, as it which, was at launch. Which is several thousand dollars. Here's the family. Brooke, I love these pictures so much. Like that, the, it is like walking into a Star Wars movie. We have about a minute left. Uh, you guys have done this a few times and every time the adventure is different, right Brooke? Every time the adventure is different, there are a whole bunch of different paths that you can take and they change. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure driven by, um, driven, to some extent by your data pad that's your phone and you have all these conversations with characters on there and you make decisions and you choose who you're going to help and then that um kind of also fuels the interactions and the meetings that you find yourself in you might be in a first order meeting in the engineering room or you might be in bridge training with the captain and decide to stick with her and help her throughout the voyage um and then and there is also an excursion that you take where you sort of, you know, backdoor into Batu, into Star Wars Galaxy's Edge without ever seeing the entrance or walking through Toy Story Land or anything like that. So the immersion is totally maintained throughout the story. Um, and yeah, so it's really just it's, a start to finish, deeply immersive experience. I, I hope people go, I hope they're watching this. And if you're planning a trip, if you don't listen to me, if you don't, Listen to Brooke. She knows everything. Brooke, I so appreciate this. Will you please come back on the show? I would love to. It's so great to talk to you and see you, and, Jason. And I can't wait to finally meet you. I can't believe all the, yes. all the times we've never run into each other. So It's going to happen soon. I'm sure of it. It's going to. Brooke McDonald, everyone, to check out all of Brooke's travel articles and content, look for her on Instagram. Her handle is Brooke G. McDonald. We will be right back. Back in a moment.